pike is a big, mean, ferocious fish, and, and one of my favorite ways to catch him is on the fly rod. It's a real intense fishery. It's often shallow water, clear water, very up close, boiling strikes, and, and a lot of different factors come into play. Maybe you tie your own flies, putting the right cast, the way you strip it, feeling the fish with your hands right when it bites. It's, it's so intense and, and up close. So, so when you get that, that good pike on the fly equipment, it's, it's just, it's unbeatable. Join me on a bunch of different fishing trips. During this film, I will show and tell you about how I fish and maybe even teach you a thing or two. After watching this film, hopefully everyone will understand why pike fishing is my greatest passion. We'll start off by fishing from a boat. This is a big brackish inlet we're fishing and um, I have some ideas of where I think the fish are but I don't know exactly where they are, what depth, what area. So um, we're doing sort of a real searching type fishing where we're trying fishing the fly fairly fast and, and trying to cover a lot of water. How you maneuver your boat is really important when you're fly fishing and it's a real luxury to have a, a trolling motor like this that you can control with the remote. But another real effective way to, uh, to cover a lot of water in just any old regular boat is using a drift sock. You can uh, buy one fairly inexpensive. You can even, if you're real cheap, you can make your own out of, out of a big blue Ikea bag. And the drift sock slows you down so we can drift slow enough to, to fish the fly, but we're moving all the time, so we're really covering a lot of water and trying to figure out where the fish are. If you're somewhere where you know they're going to be right here on a specific ledge or a specific spot, then you can anchor up and fish that. But when you're doing like we are now, we're more kind of searching, trying to find the fish, and the drift sock is great for that. And if I do find some fish, I'll put the anchor down, um, probably while I fight the fish, and then I'll, have, I'll be in the same spot and I can fish it through while I'm still on the anchor to see if there's more fish in that area. Depending on how big an area you're fishing, you can kind of put together a pattern to, uh, to cover a lot of water. And right here we're fishing from shore to shore and then drifting across, across slowly with the wind and the drift sock. And then we'll move down a little bit and try again just a little bit further down. So that way we motor back through the area where we've already fished and then we drift over a completely new fresh area where there hasn't been fished and there hasn't been any boat moving either. To be real effective to fish kind of a zigzag pattern where you motor through where you've already fished and then drift through a new area so you're constantly covering fresh, fresh areas where you haven't been with the boat. Is that a fish? Just the weeds. So you're constantly covering a fresh area. Oh yeah, nice strike. That's a good looking pike. Let's see.
Got him on the reel now. He's a strong fellow. But I'm not complaining, don't get me wrong. Yeah, nice. Nice, well built, strong fish. Perfect condition. Not a fatty, but strong. Got a little cut from the pike, but uh, that doesn't bother me. If my get, fingers get scarred up, that means it's been a good day. And that pike here, we've been catching a few smaller pike on sort of a more naturalistic green color uh, fly. And as we drifted up towards this line here, the water's more turbid up towards the shore and, and, and it's a lot more dirty, a lot more, uh, a lot less visibility. And uh, I switched to, uh, to this flash fly. It's still sort of a fish imitation that has a real fishy profile. It's got the eyes, but uh, it lights up a lot better here in the darker water. go oh that was a nice take oh, 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 oh. oh he's off he's off oh this place just looked fishy and it was get the anchor out Decent sized fish. Came up right sideways right as he took it. That looked cool. Yeah. 
so pretty, these brackish water fish. They have this greenish tint that you just don't get in fresh water. That's the one. It's engine in. Go follow that baby. This is a good fish. Put a little bit more pressure on him. net. Got my gloves, got the pliers. Oh, good looking fish. I don't think he's ready yet, but if he is, Oh, he's going under the boat. Put this net away for a while. It's a good reason to keep a tidy boat. You don't have too much stuff he can get caught in. He's been down in some of that seaweed. Look at this baby. Oh, look at this. Nice bike. Here we go. On and down. Does he make the magic meter? No. 97. Good fight. Good, good fight. Scraggly, the wet little thing. All right, let's get this guy back. He belongs. Nice. That was awesome. That was a good fight from that fish. Love catching them here in these shallow waters. The setup that I just used for, for this fish was uh, with the floating line and then the pike-like pike fly, which is a little pike imitation, kind of an elongated green, yellow, a little bit of gold, darker colored fly. And when it's getting towards dusk, like now, I like a dark colored fly where the pike can see him from below up towards the light sky and it puts a nice silhouette up there. And being in a boat is nice because you can have two rods ready. I've got this one with an intermediate slow sinking line for fishing out where it's a little bit deeper. And here we drifted over the shoal and I switched to the other rod with the all floating line. About a nine foot leader, little bite tip here of course. And um, yeah, I guess it worked. That was awesome. This is the pike like pike fly. And that's because uh, when spin fishing, jerk bait fishing, Pike imitation colors have always been a favorite of mine, um, especially in, in the spring, but, but also in the fall, like we're fishing now. And, and this is a real simple fly that I tie that maybe the pike think it looks like a little pike. Maybe they don't. Um, either way, 
I don't really care. But uh, a couple Sonker tails, a little bit of flash, Sonker wrap. Um, you can put a little bit of marabou in it also. And then a couple golden eyes, and uh, yeah, you're good to go. Work today at least. That was great. Been on the water all day, mostly catching smaller fish. And then here, one of the last casts of the day and a big fish comes up and just hammers that fly. And it just shows that persistence is key. Mornings are always nice, but setting sun, something about that light change just gets the pike in a feeding mood sometimes. I think maybe it's harder for the prey fish to see the pike approaching. And the pike know that. So they go into a little bit of hunting mode for an hour here, right around dusk. Not a monster, but it's a good fish. I'm gonna use the net on this one. Does it? Eighty seven. Two feet stuck. Gonna need a band aid. This is my blood, not the fish's. This is my makeshift band aid out of duct tape and a piece of cloth. So, uh, two lessons learned. One, bring band aids in your boat. And two, when you do bring gloves, wear them when you hold the fish. And that's what I'm doing on the next one. I always like to have my net when I'm fly fishing. This is a big net, so it can handle a good sized fish if I get lucky and catch one. 
and uh, the, the mesh is uh, out of rubber so it doesn't harm the fish and, and you can hold the fish like I just did you can hold it alongside the boat find your camera get your pliers ready whatever you need so something like this is a great thing to have and this folds down and uh, can be easily stored away I like to keep it folded out so I'm ready because you never know when the fish is gonna bite another thing is my mat because I don't want to put the fish out here drop it in the middle of the boat so a mat like this you get it wet this one here has a uh, centimeters and inches so you can measure the length of your fish which is a nice feature Basically, casting a pike fly isn't any different than casting any other fly. One little difference, though, is that often I'll make a slightly longer stroke than I normally would, simply to help move along this large and wind-resistant fly. The big difference lies in the choice of line and leader, and we'll take a closer look at that now. As far as rods for pike fly fishing goes, you can basically use any rod. I strongly recommend that you use a 7 or an 8 weight or even a heavier rod, because you will be casting big flies. And as far as pike flies go, this isn't even a big fly. Uh, and often you'll be dealing with wind and the heavier the rod you use, the further you can cast. So a, a relatively heavy rod, 7 or an 8 weight, is definitely an advantage. This happens to be a saltwater rod, which really isn't necessary, but the lifting power that has been built into the bottom section of this rod is also often an advantage when you're pike fishing, because you will eventually catch big and heavy fish, and often they'll run for some structure, and uh, then the lifting power uh, in these saltwater rods is, is a great advantage, so you can stop the fish. This happens to be an eight-foot rod, and especially when you're casting these relatively heavy lines and big flies, and especially in the wind, I really find that this 8-foot rod compared to a 9-foot rod is an advantage. It's simply easier to cast. But any 9-foot rod will do just as well. I do recommend that you don't use anything longer than a 9-foot rod. So basically, you can use any 7 or 8 weight fly rod that you already have. But you will need a specialty fly line. As far as weight forward lines go, most manufacturers today make specialty fly lines that are made specifically for pike fishing or for casting very big flies. The main difference in these lines uh, compared to a, a standard weight forward line is that the belly is usually shorter and it's a little bit heavier and it's made with, with a very steep and powerful front taper that will help you turn over these big flies. Another line choice you can make is using a shooting head. The shooting head has some advantages. You can customize your own line so you can make it as long or as short as you prefer. And when you're out fishing, you have the advantage of quickly changing your line so that you can go from a floating line to a sinking line. That way you can change tactics in a matter of minutes. If you choose a shooting head as your, uh, as your line uh, when pike fishing, I recommend that you go for a relatively short shooting head. That simply makes casting big flies a lot easier. Uh, this happens to be an 8 meter long floating shooting head and I rarely use shooting heads longer than that when pike fishing. Specialty fly lines and 
and the fly rods aside, perhaps the most important part of your setup is your leader. Uh, one thing that you will need is a, is a wire trace uh, at the end of your leader, otherwise a pike will simply cut off your fly. Uh, I prefer to use some sort of wire. You can use heavy fluorocarbon, but the risk of the pike biting off the fly is larger when you're using fluorocarbon. Wire is definitely the best. Leaders for pike fishing are actually as simple as they can be. The first part of the leader is a, a approximately one and a half meter long piece of nylon, at least 0.50 millimeters in diameter, and you can definitely use it heavier as well. Attached to that is a piece of wire that prevents the pike from biting off the fly, and attached to the wire is the fly. So the leader itself is actually very, very simple. I attach the nylon to the fly line with a loop-to-loop -loop connection. Most fly lines today come with a factory-made loop, and with a perfection loop in the nylon, you simply loop-to-loop -loop these two together. As for the wire tippet, if you use a wire that you can tie knots on, you can simply make the exact same connection, two perfection loops that you loop together. And at the terminal end, a simple loop knot in the wire attaches the fly. Wire leaders can curl and often need replacement, typically a few times during a day of fishing. The leader Lars just recommended is a very good solution because it's simple and easily replaceable. There's no need for swivels. Use a multi-strand wire. This makes it easy to tie knots. Tie a perfection loop in one end. You can find the knot online and it's very easy to tie. The fly is attached to the leader with a simple loop knot, like this one. Tie an open knot on the leader, then pull the fly onto it and turn the wire two times around itself. Then you guide the wire through the loop and tighten it by pulling from both ends. Another option is to use a snap, but it's very important that it's of good and strong quality. Alternatively to a multi-strand wire is to use a single strand titanium. It does not bend as much, but it still needs replacement after a few hours of fishing. Never use crimps to make your leaders. The cast can make the titanium very fragile and in risk of breaking while casting. Use a clinch knot instead and twist it two or three times around itself. Then pull both ends with a plier to tighten the knot. Attach a swivel or small ring in one end and a heavy fly snap in the other. Cool to fish shallow water like this because every now and then you'll see the pike moving around so you know they're in here and then sometimes you'll just either see that wake behind your fly or you'll see one coming from the side moving towards your fly and you know you better get ready
came up, gave it a little tug. Let's see what we got here. Bring him into this mess. Poor fish. Oh, he's pretty decent. Just really gotta watch out they don't get hooked up on something. Wanna keep them away from all those dead trees up there. Let's see. If I can get him by the lip. between the legs. <laughs> These float tubes are awesome, but they are kind of a mess to land the pike from. <laughs> Got a little bit of a long leader on here too. And the hook just comes out as I land him. Thank you, fish. Beautiful fish. Nice shape. All right. Nice fish. This is the fly that the pike took, and it's your basic flash fly in some golden colors. But what's a little bit special about it is it has one of these cone discs attached to it, which is the type that's mainly used for salmon flies. Uh, I've also put a little epoxy head and some eyes on this one. And what this does is it creates some turbulence behind the fly that really gets this flash pulsating and makes the fly look something like a live creature that the pike wants to eat. Another advantage to this head is that it pushes a lot of water. So it sends out these pressure waves that the pike pick up with their lateral line. And when you're fishing in water like this, that's real dark and murky where the pike might have a hard time seeing the fly, this is one of the ways that you can make sure that they're alert of the fly's presence. You kind of have two options if you want the fly to, uh, to be very visible to the pike. You can pick a fly in some very bright colors, something like this, or chartreuse, or you can do something that creates a big wake and creates a lot of commotion under the water. And a cone head like this is great for that. Of course, you can also do both, which is what this fly does. It has some real colorful yellow and chartreuse and has one of these cone discs as a head too. And this cone disc also really gets this marabou pulsating in the water. Another option to go with instead of these cone discs is uh, the magic heads that are like this and uh, pretty much have the same effect, probably even more so, uh, where they really push a lot of water and make some noise under the water. And this will also get this flash going real nice. And these you can just take off so you can add it to your different flies and use it on several different flies and have a couple of these with you. And you can also fish your flies without them because some days it's uh, better with them, some days it's not. Usually when the water's murky like this, it can be a good thing. Let me tell you a little bit more in detail about the different types of pike flies and not least their history. Uh, because as it turns out, pike on rod and line is definitely not a new sport. And I have with me some uh, hard evidence for that. This is in fact an archaeological find, which is why I'm wearing these white gloves. And we have been lucky enough to borrow this from the museum in Heatherslew and what I have with me is in fact a pike leader that is archaeologically dated to the 13th, 14th century. 
AD. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's actually a wire leader with a small barbless double hook on it. So even uh, seven or 800 years ago, pike fishermen knew that they had to protect their line from the sharp teeth of the pike. This leader could easily have been used in a historical bog like this one where we're sitting now. Later on in the golden era of fly fishing in England in the 1800s, pike fly fishing was also a common and accepted sport. And in that period they would have used flies like this one. This one I tied uh, from a pattern that was actually used in the 1800s. It's tied uh, on an 8 odd salmon hook, so it's, it's quite a big and heavy fly and of course using lots of materials and colors just as we do now. In Scandinavia, pike on the fly as a sport didn't really start to grow until the 1990s where Morten Velour popularized this fly which is basically just a, a big flash streamer. Uh, made entirely of soft flashaboo spun in dubbing loops and it's still a very good and very popular fly type. The more modern style of uh, hook flies for pike now combines different types of synthetic fibers and flash and these plastic heads where you can glue eyes on and that of course gives you a whole range of possibilities in both imitation and provocation. One of the latest developments in pike flies is of course the introduction of tube flies which are very popular in all sorts of fly fishing. Uh, here's one in the style of uh, Niklas Bauer and Daniel D. Holm which allows you to tie really big flies with a lot of volume that are still lightweight and relatively easy to cast on a 7 or 8 weight outfit. These flies are extremely lively in the water with these long flowing saddle hackles and very long pieces of flesh and synthetic fibers. So they really undulate and move in the water. Any normal cheap lure box is actually very good for keeping your pike flies in, both for storage and for fishing. I like these uh, ventilated boxes because they allow the flies to, to drain and, and dry, but apart from that, any lure box is actually very good. In this box I have my poppers, which I think is my favorite kind of fly fishing for pike. There are basically three types of poppers. There's this the gurgler type, which is made of two or three layers of foam just fold it over the fly. Then there's a, a more normal flathead popper which creates a lot of commotion and disturbance uh, in the surface. And then there's the more standard diver type with a, with a tapered head towards the hook eye which doesn't create as much commotion but more slides and dives along the surface. These modern surface flies are cheap and easy to tie using, uh, like this one, uh, craft foam or, or these pre-formed foam popper heads. Before that, we had to use something like this, which is stacked and clipped uh, deer hair, which does float the fly, uh, but of course it's very time consuming to tie. But it also does give you some creative possibilities to tie something like this little fish imitation. Both of these flies are exceptionally well tied and are tied by Søren Flaub. These are not standard fishing flies but shows the creative possibilities that you have with stacking deer hair. I don't use uh, stinger hooks on my flies because I've often found that they end up hooking the pike very deep and in order to make it easy to release the pike, I always fish barbless hooks and when the pike is hooked in the outside of the mouth, this tool is actually very good for releasing them. You simply slide the leader through the slot here and then you push it down towards the fly where it catches the hook bend 
and with a simple twitch, you release the pike. This tool is only good when the pike is hooked in the outside of the mouth. When it's hooked deeper, a pair of long nose pliers is the very best tool for removing the fly. And they're also very handy to mash down the barb of the fly or to cut wire here on the inside of the pliers. Even though I tie all my hook flies on long shank hooks like this one, there are two good reasons for tying the flies on the back part of the hook like this one. The first is that it gives you much less fouling on the hook like this. And the second one is that it's much easier to release the pike simply by grabbing this naked part of the hook shank with your pliers. This is a new lake. I've never fished this lake before, but it's real shallow. It's, it's, some places it's three or four meters deep, but, but most of it is about waist high. The water's fairly clear, and here in the month of the May, when uh, the fish are just done spawning, hopefully they're going to be all fired up, ready to bite, and, and that combined with the shallow water gives me an idea that this might be ideal conditions for trying to catch them on the popper. And the popper is by far not the easiest, most effective way of catching pike, but <laughs> probably the most fun. And uh, if this works out well, uh, I, th I think we won't be in doubt as why. Um, so up here in this depth, the fish can be, and I'm just going to try cover this with the popper and and uh, and see if we can get some of them to come up and uh, and strike it. Oh, that was cool. That's what we're here for. And that kick it gives, that moment, when it just comes out of nowhere. He's a feisty one. Maybe this is just my theory, but having a fish fight around and splashing and making a mess here um, can sometimes wake up other fish in the area, and, and I would not be surprised if, uh, if he attracts some more fish for the next one. fly I caught the pike on is real simple, function over looks. It's uh, your classic flash fly with a white popping head. And really that's all you need. It gives the, the profile, it gives the noise, gives the floating uh, of, a, of a popper, and then that big uh, body that just kind of lights up in the water. It's hard to figure out what the right retrieve is. I like to start with a couple big loud pops. To attract the fish, let it sit a little bit, and then also just these kind of small pops 
where it kind of gurgles in the water. When you're about halfway in, you give it a couple big ones again. And although it's a little bit boring, it can be effective to let it just kind of sit there for a while. Seems like those pike, they need to think about it sometimes before they strike. I'm going to try this diver instead of the popper. Basically it's the same thing, just a foam head on a flash fly. But instead of a popping head, this is a diving head. So on the retrieve it swims down just beneath the surface. So you still have that visual topwater strike. But the advantage is that uh, when it dives down, the pike see it from the side and not just from below. And uh, they seem to be more keen on, on striking these. So if they're a little bit careful with the poppers, then uh, the divers can, be, can do the trick sometimes. That's the thing, then it doesn't really matter how big the fish is when you get that, that moment. Now I'm gonna try a big popper. This one has a real cup surface. Uh, so it really makes some noise and uh, hopefully it can wake them up here now that there's a little bit of wind on the surface. We have made some unique underwater recording that show the popper strike above and below the surface at the same time. We've been using a dual camera setup in front of the popper and can show the behavior of the pike when they strike. The popper is hookless, so it does not have the same action in the water compared to fishing with a real popper. But we got some pretty cool shots that show how the pike strikes at the surface. First, we're going to see some classic pike strikes. Here, the pike hits hard and violently. for it again. There we go. <laughs> oh. oh, that was classic. That was classic. Now do you understand why I love popper fishing? But it's not always the pike strikes hard and fast. Here's some examples of pike following the fly and looking very carefully before finally attacking. In some cases, a stinger hook can really make the difference.
Oh, I think there's one on it now. Looked like a little bit of nervous water, but maybe I'm just beginning to see things. Now we got him. Oh, he wanted that popper. Unbelievable. That's May for you, all right. That was fun. Sometimes they almost hit the popper, or they regret and they turn at the last moment. On the surface, it looks like a brutal strike, but the pike actually took it gently before disappearing in a big splash. One on it. Eat it. Eat again, eat again. Completely missed it. There we go. <laughs> oh, love this. This is a little bay here. It's got some deeper water out in the middle. And this is the type of spot that could hold a bigger fish. So I want to see what I can get to take the popper here. Unfortunately, nothing came up and hit the popper. But before I want to move on, I want to make sure that I've fished this through thoroughly. Because again, I got a feeling this could be a, a spot that could hold a good fish or two. We're still in May and, 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 and got these aggressive fish, so I'm going to put on a fly that's kind of loud. It's an ugly one, but it certainly is effective. It's a propeller fly that has this propeller that spins around and makes this sound underwater. And inspired by spin fishing with spinners, which is great in May, I've tied up some flies where I put these on the front. And then some bucktail and some flash, a little bit of sonker, you can see this one's kind of chewed on. And um, yeah, we'll see if this does the trick. And even though I got the floating line here, I can let it sink down a little bit and just jig it real slowly 
and then it's got the weighted front so it sinks front first and then the propeller spins even when it's jigging as it goes down towards the bottom. So no matter whether I'm pulling it in where, it, where it's rising or whether it's sinking towards the bottom, that propeller is spinning all the time. fighting slow and deep and usually that's certainly a good sign. If I hadn't gotten the look of him, I would have been sure this was a monster the way he's pulling out there. He wouldn't give me the satisfaction of a popper strike, but he's definitely putting up a good fight. He just won't. The strategy worked, and uh, there's a deep hole. Would have loved to have had that fish come up on the popper, but definitely pays off to still fish it with something that sinks down a little bit. And this uh, little propeller fly, well, evidently did the trick. <laughs> How awesome was that? How awesome was that? This isn't about the weight or the statistics. It's about that one moment when they strike. And this was a gorgeous moment. Oh, gorgeous fish. Gorgeous fish and he's off. Beautiful. <laughs> That was awesome. That, that's, that's what it's all about. Beautiful spring evening, a big pike, surface popper, having it right in front of your feet, so visual, seeing it before it strikes, adrenaline going, and the fact that I didn't catch that fish, that I didn't get to hold it up, doesn't matter. I got everything I wanted out of that fish. <laughs>